Hello, I'm JW, and uh, previously we've seen uh, multimeters and how you can measure various things with them, mainly uh, voltage and resistance, because although it's possible to measure current with these on a mains voltage circuit, that's not something you want to be doing, so that involves breaking into the circuit, exposing live parts, and of course the problem then is that all of the current you're measuring has to actually go via the meter, and most meters, this will include it, only go up to around 10 amps, which uh, even in a house, if you want to say measure the current on a particular circuit, 10 amps isn't really a whole lot, so had your uh, electric cooker or something, it's going to use far more than that. So although these measure current, at mains voltage is uh, not normally the sort of thing you're going to be using. And of course what you'd use instead is one of these, which is a clamp meter, and these go up to uh, considerably higher ranges, so this particular one goes up to many hundreds of amps, and these are much quicker and much easier to use, and do not involve exposing live wires or even cutting into the wires at all. So here we have a fairly typical example of a clamp meter, battery powered in this case, just the uh, batteries in the back there. And on the front here we've got the various settings, so we've got uh, basically off as at the moment there, current, which of course is its uh, primary function, and this is for AC current only. This particular one does have some uh, connections at the bottom, which can then also be used for measuring uh, things like uh, resistance and also voltage, so voltage AC and voltage DC, but those do require that you uh, connect uh, test leads to the bottom here. Its main function though is on the amps range, and see it's showing uh, obviously zero at the moment because obviously there's no thing connected to it. And in order to measure the current, then the wire that you're going to be having the current going through it needs to go through here. And this does open up so you can uh, say so there's a wire here which you wanted to see what current was going through. It's simply a matter of just opening the jaws, putting the wire inside, and then the current flowing will be displayed down here. And you've seen this uh, particular clamp meter in a number of other videos, mainly those outside ones where things have to be destroyed and damaged. And essentially that's pretty much all there is to it. This is an auto-ranging one, as most of them tend to be, so uh, at the moment it's just showing basically 0.00 amps, but on higher ranges it will just uh, automatically scale there as appropriate. Now the only uh, real things to note about these is that uh, in order for them to work correctly, the jaws here must be fully closed. If they're sort of stuck uh, partly open, it's not going to work, and even a small gap here can actually make a massive difference to the reading that you get. So uh, simply press it around the wire, as long as those are fully closed, whatever current is through this wire will end up on the display. Now this particular one, if you have a look in the end there, so it's got a metallic part in there, and a metallic part there, and essentially this is uh, basically a metallic loop here, and then inside here there's a big, uh, well, fairly fine coil of wire, around that side, so all that's happening is it's essentially a transformer. So as the current goes through here, it's putting a magnetic field into this uh, metal ring here. That's being picked up here and amplified by that little winding inside the device, and that's what's using to display the current. That type we can identify because it's always got the metallic parts in the ends, and again it's essential that those two parts do meet together. Otherwise, if it's even slightly open, the magnetic loop here is broken, and therefore any readings are complete garbage. Now, there's another type of these which you can get, which in here, you'll find that the end is actually just plastic on both sides, and these uh, have what's called a Hall effect sensor in the end here, and although it's still measuring the magnetic field, it's basically using a uh, semiconductor device to do that, rather than a uh, coil of wire. Uh, the benefits of those is they can also measure DC current, and you'll notice that's uh, conspicuously absent on this particular one, so uh, that's something that you'll find if the ends are plastic, it's using that alternative method of measurement. But in terms of using it, exactly the same. Clip around the wire, there's the current on the display, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, in order to demonstrate this working, I can actually use the uh, appliance tester, which is up on the shelf there, and essentially that can pass a current through normally uh, the earth uh, wire of an appliance to make sure it's connected, but uh, by putting the uh, wire through here and just basically uh, shorting this out to the other end, we can basically get a current to flow through this and therefore see how this thing operates. So uh, basically it's just a question of uh, clipping around the wire here and uh, just turn on the machine here. So uh, if we turn on the uh, test function, we can see here we've got a current in the sort of region of 21 amps or so, and that's diminishing slowly as the wires heat up, so we won't leave that on for too long. Now, 
If you're going to measure a very low current, say in the uh, lower than the thing is really intended for, what you can do is instead of just putting a single loop through here, you can actually put two loops through. So if we uh, loop that around that, we've now got two wires effectively going through here, although they both happen to be the same. So what we should now see is the current on the display is double what it was before. So uh, it's sort of 21, 22 point previously. So if we do the test again, you can now see the current is in the region of sort of 41, 42. But of course, the current in the wire is the same. It's just because we put two loops uh, through the uh, jaws here, we're basically measuring double the amount. And the same thing applies, so we could in fact uh, put uh, many turns through there. So this, for example, would be uh, four turns through that. Uh, just again, connect up to the uh, clip there. And again, we run the test. And we now see it's reading in the region of 85. But of course, the actual current is the same. It's still that sort of 21, 22 area. Just fetch we're multiplying it by it by four. So that's a useful technique there if you want to measure a particularly low current and your meter doesn't actually go down to that, or only in this case only has a fairly limited range at the bottom. Now, of course, that's all very fine with a single wire. And another mistake uh, which can be made with these things is attempting to measure things where you've got multiple cores in a piece of flex. Now, the limitation of these things. And in fact, uh, one thing which can be useful in some cases is that whatever goes through here really ought to just be a single wire, or in the case of this, you can get the same single wire and probably put two or three turns through there. What you can't do is to take the lead from an appliance like this, for example, and then put this around here and hope to see what sort of current the appliance is using. All you're going to get on here is zero, regardless of what's happening, because inside here, of course, you've got the line and the neutral, and in this case, the earth as well, so although the current is flowing through the line conductor, at the same moment it's going in this direction, it's also going back on the neutral, so the net result here is zero because it's the same current flowing through in different directions. So attempting to measure the current through an appliance where you've got both line and neutral in there, it simply doesn't going to work, it's going to get zero on the display. So unfortunately the only way to do it then is to get a lead where you can actually access the individual, either line or the neutral, which would involve sort of splitting this open and uh, cutting it apart and whatever. So uh, unfortunately, as easy as that might seem to do, it isn't going to work, so uh, don't even bother. Of course, it's quite possible to make up a little sort of an adapter thing where you've got a, uh, say, a plug and a socket, and then you've got your individual wires exposed between the two. They ought to be uh, double insulated, really, and then you could just uh, put your clamp meter around, just say, one of the wires, but uh, it's generally easier to buy one of those sort of monitor things you can just plug it into anyway because they're fairly readily available. Now I'll say this is a fairly typical example of a modern clamp meter. I say these are battery powered and uh, some often have the other sort of voltage and things on the bottom as well, in which case you're just going to plug in there and use it pretty much like a normal multimeter. But of course clamp meters didn't always look like this so uh, we've got some others here which uh, we'll have a look at. This was a fairly popular type back in the day. This is called a Western Clipper. But you see, it's a very similar sort of design. We've got the uh, jaws here at the end here, and then the uh, opening uh, button on the side there. And as is the case with all these old ones, it's going with a metallic uh, core here. So again, it's a purely magnetic arrangement. There'll be a coil of wire inside here. Plenty of dirt and dust on this thing. This is made by Sangamo Western, and I say called the Western Clipper because you can uh, clip it onto the wires and uh, it's made by uh, Western. So that's the uh, name of that one. And uh, this particular one requires no batteries at all. It's uh, purely just a mechanical meter in here. So it's basically a coil of wire there. The current flows through that is then fed directly into the uh, coil of the meter here. And then it displays the reading there directly. Now in this case, you've got the ranges along the bottom here. So you just need to move this red lever to the appropriate point. So in this side it's only going to go up to 6 amps, so that would be your red scale there. And it goes up to 60, so it's the red scale multiplied by 10, so that will be, for example, 40. And then you've also got your black one, so uh, 15, 30, 150 and 300. And again, that's the scale on the top. And for these two, again, you're just multiplying that by 10, so where it says 10, that would actually mean 100. 
And this one, like the uh, modern Fluke one, also has an option for voltage, and again that's over here, and again various ranges, and you would just plug in your actual test lead here into the bottom. So very similar in operation, it's just simply got that uh, analog type meter scale, but uh, operation wise it's exactly the same. Now does this thing uh, still work? Well of course, uh, there's an easy way to find out, just stuff this in here, and we use the same uh, thing we had previously. So if we're going to set this here, we set it say, to the 30 amp range, so um, assuming we're going to get the thing working we should see the needle sort of up here somewhere between the 20 and 30 as we had sort of what 24 amps or something when we tested previously. So uh, let's place that there. And yep there it is, it's moved around to uh, say just over the 20 mark and as before it's gradually falling away as the uh, wires heat up and their resistance increases. So uh, despite its age it does seem to work perfectly well and if we try on the 60 amp range then we should see it only moving to around this point here, 2 being of course 20. Yep and again that's doing uh, pretty much exactly the same. So despite its age it still seems to work uh, perfectly well and again in terms of operation uh, exactly the same, you've got the little instruction things on the back there. And this comes with this uh, sort of carrying case here. We don't have the original leads for the volt socket, but uh, probably lost long ago. But so generally not going to be uh, measuring voltage with one of those. It's uh, primarily designed for current, as the modern ones are. Now of course there's another style, and it's this thing here. Now this is a considerably larger deal. These were usually called tong testers, due to their uh, excessive tong-like appearance, but again the actual uh, principles are exactly the same. Handle on the side and the uh, wire you want to test goes through there. And as with the others again it's the uh, metal sort of loop around the top. So uh, in terms of uh, how it works it's just going to be another coil of wire in here and a meter on the front. This one comes with plenty of dust and cobwebs included. And uh, this particular one is branded Ferranti. Let's see the uh, details on the front here, so uh, Ferranti clip-on ammeter. Again it's a uh, standard sort of uh, meter on the front here, the glass is actually missing in the case of this one, and all this uh, cobwebs and business uh, falling out of there. But uh, as with the uh, Sangamo one we've got the uh, range switch here along the bottom, so you just select the appropriate range and it will display the current on the front. Uh, ranges on this one start at uh, 10 amps, and then sort of 25, 50, 100, 250, 500, and in fact all the way up to 1000 if you went uh, all the way over to there. And as with the other one it's a question of reading the appropriate scale, so either the uh, one of the top ones or the bottom, and in the case of the high one, say the 1000, then you're basically multiplying by 10, so that would be the bottom scale, that 100 would obviously be 1000 with the additional digit on the end. Now I don't know whether this one works or not, but uh, we can find out. So again, if we set the current range, say, to 50, which will be the sort of middle scale there, and then for the uh, test we should see it sort of just over the 20 mark in there. So as before, it's just going to be the wire through the top loop there. This does seem to be a bit uh, sticky there, so make sure that is uh, pressed fully together. And so the glass is missing from this as well, so... Uh, We'll see if it's going to do anything. Well it does seem to move so uh, that's not too bad. I think the needle is sticking there a bit but uh, if we go down to the 25 range it should move further but no it doesn't because uh, the needle is sticking but uh, nevertheless in principle it's kind of working. It's just that the uh, needle is a bit uh, sticky there. Oh, it's a bit better now. But again, the principle's the same, and in reality there's not really much in these things to go wrong. After all, it's just a uh, coil of wire and a meter. So I just looked out the three uh, next to each other. The uh, modern Fluke here, the Western Clipper, which is actually slightly smaller, and this uh, old Ferranti, which of course is absolutely huge. And also, just check out the huge thickness of this thing compared to the uh, modern devices. This uh, is a considerable amount of weight involved inside. So look there at clamp meters, and really for measuring current in AC or main circuits then that's pretty much the only realistic choice. Much safer, much quicker, 
and much easier. So uh, normally you wouldn't be using a multimeter for that, although in theory you could, but the uh, reality is that not a good choice, so uh, clamp meter is the winner by far. So until next time, thanks for watching.